Okay, we are now going to do a full zirconia crown preparation for tooth number three. Uh, we're going to change things a little bit on this preparation. Rather than doing uh, our proximal surfaces and breaking contact first, we're going to do our occlusal reduction first and then break proximal contact. The other thing we're going to change with this is rather than creating a chamfer margin, we're going to do a rounded shoulder. So when it comes time to do our axial reduction, rather than using uh, the 6878K018 diamond, we will use a 5856 016 diamond. It's the rounded end torpedo shape. So we'll start uh, with our 1557 crosscut fisher burr rounded end to do uh, our guide cuts and our occlusal reduction and go from there. So first off, check our occlusion, see what kind of clearance we have with the opposing dentition. Again, this is a pretty class one. The cusp bossa relationship is pretty straightforward. So, yep. Uh, universally. The only place there might be maybe at the distal buckle, possibly, but not bad. It's pretty uniform throughout. So we'll start by uh, placing a guide cut on the uh, triangular ridge. Uh, it's actually the part of the oblique ridge on this upper molar. We'll parallel it with that triangular ridge. And this 1557 burr is a millimeter in diameter. Our total occlusal reduction, when we're all finished, we want to be 1.5 to 2 millimeters. Uniform occlusal reduction. And so with our guide cuts, we're going to stay close to a millimeter. You don't want to overdo the guide cuts, or sometimes you end up going deep by the time you've refined your preparation. The other place where we can put guide cuts, if we uh, do our preparation in this order with the occlusal reduction first, is near the distal marginal ridge in the groove. So we can put a couple of guide cuts right there. And then now we'll move to the buckle groove. And now the triangular ridge on the mesial buckle cusp. And now we'll go to the marginal ridge area, just mesial to that. On an upper first molar uh, and an upper second molar, this large mesial lingual cusp actually takes up about two-thirds of that lingual surface compared to the smaller, much smaller, distal lingual cusp, which is about one-third of that whole lingual area. And this part of the, of the mesial lingual cusp ends up being quite kind of a large flat area. So we'll prepare some guide cuts along that to help guide that shape. We'll start on the triangular ridge and we'll have to come at this direction like that. And we'll put another one uh, toward the mesial marginal ridge. Get our 
patient in the right position here. If you're ever feeling like it's awkward and you can't get a good position, move the patient. They're only going to be in that position for a few minutes and you operate in that position day in and day out. Now we'll come back and we'll do the lingual groove and that that groove follows a very oblique angle uh, going from buccal to lingual it tends to migrate mesially so uh, there's there's a strong tendency when we place the lingual groove to straighten it out and make it perpendicular to the line of the teeth and just take it straight lingually and that's not the shape of those teeth it has a distal to mesial direction on it so we want to make sure we maintain that and we'll go back to that distal pit and put a guide cut right there I'm going to put one more guide cut on that um, easy. Actually, this may not need a, another guide cut along. I think we're, yeah, no, I will do another guide cut along the oblique ridge. And it will connect with the other guide cut on the distal buckle cut going along that triangular ridge. So just like that. And one last guide cut would be on the distal marginal ridge. Area right there. We can go ahead at this point and place guide cuts for the functional cusp bevel, but we don't have the advantage of that functional cusp bevel opening up visibility to the lingual aspect of the tooth preparation like we do if it were a mandibular molar. Um, so we'll go ahead and place the guide cuts, but again, we don't get the benefit uh, like we do when it's in the lower arch. Got to lengthen our burr here a little bit. Okay, and again, we want to keep this direction from distal to mesial. I'm staying now in the lingual groove. And this is guide cuts for the functional cusp bevel. guide cut for the distal lingual cusp, a very small cusp, and we'll do another guide cut maintaining the direction of the mesial lingual cusp. We'll change burrs because this one's getting pretty dull. Okay, so there's all of our guide cuts and now we're going to connect them and uh, try to make some sense of our occlusal reduction.
Remember this uh, mesial lingual cusp has a very large flat surface that faces to the buckle. And we're basically just connecting that. Now we'll do our uh, functional cusp bevel and we want to pay particular attention to maintain the direction of that lingual cusp that it uh, goes from distal to mesial. So that's our rough occlusal reduction. Let's uh, check ourselves and see that we're uh, relatively uniform, which we are a little bit closer toward the distal. So let's take a little bit more off in that area. Okay, so we've checked our, uh, our occlusal clearance and we reduced a little bit more toward the distal where it seemed like it was still a little bit close and it may still be that way and when we do our final diamond finishing of that occlusal reduction we'll we'll refine that and pay attention there we can now move to breaking contact and so we'll stay with our 1557 burr and move now to uh, the distal proximal contact Again, I recommend that you always do these in direct vision. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to do it through a mirror. So have the patient turn way off to the left so we can see directly through that proximal contact. Pull their cheek back out of the way and uh, it makes it a lot easier for you and you do a little bit better job. The burr needs to be angled toward the the gingival abrasure toward this spot right down in here so you don't create a big ledge on the back side of the tooth. So the angulation of this cut is really dictated a lot by the shape of the proximal tooth surface and uh, the shape of the, of, of the embrasure, what kind of an embrasure space we have down there. So let's go ahead and make our distal cut. And again, it's just kind of a brushing motion. Always keep your eye on that proximal surface of the adjacent tooth. And just continue to move across. Notice how that burr, the tip of the burr is in that gingival embrasure space. Now we'll go to the mesial, do the same thing. We'll tip it the other way. Try to keep a little distance between your burr and that adjacent tooth. Okay, so contact is broken, and uh, it's now time to change burrs. And now that the proximal uh, contacts are broken, we can really finalize this uh, occlusal aspect of our preparation.
check uh, clearance here. We're getting close. We could take a little bit more, especially toward the distal again. So I will take more off back here. tight toward the distal so we'll continue taking that down a little bit more as you mirror the opposing occlusion it is not only important to mirror that from a mesial distal standpoint but also from a buccal to lingual so that the cusp fossa relationship is maintained. Let's check that. I think we're getting pretty close now. And we'll go over to the functional cusp and then we'll measure. Okay, so we want to maintain that lingual groove. in a distal to mesial direction. Continue across that broad mesial lingual cusp. Now we can go to our functional cusp bevel. And again, we want to maintain the distal to mesial direction of that lingual groove. done with this, these uh, cusp tips should line up right underneath, the right opposing, right above the fossa in the opposing arch and vice versa. So I think we're about there. Let's double check with uh, closing. We'll get out a device to do a little measuring and the one we're going to use is this uh, red 1.5 millimeter uh, measuring instrument and we're yeah we're a little tight there's a couple of places there that are that are close let's come in from the distal that's fine and that's fine so where we're a little tight is still right there well a little bit all the way along the uh, Primarily the functional or the non-functional cusp. So we'll take that down a little bit more to make sure we have that minimum of 1.5 millimeters of clearance. Got a 
press on the right spot. Try it again, and that's better. We've got just enough space there, enough clearance that we can start now on our axial walls. So, occlusal reduction, occlusal clearance is finished, and we'll stay with this same diamond. It's the rounded end torpedo shape because we're going to put a rounded shoulder margin on this. Now, these upper molars. The axis um, it goes a little bit out to the buckle, and so it's just the opposite of the lower molars. And so we want to maintain that in the axis that we prepare into this. We'll start on the buckle surface, but the way we'll key is off of the unprepared tooth behind. We'll try to pick an axis that seems to line up with that tooth and all of the teeth in the neighborhood. It's going to go out to the buckle just slightly. And then we'll come to the buckle surface and begin our preparation. With this diamond, it's very easy to uh, get a J-lip, to get a little ski jump at the, at the margin. And those are an absolute no-no. The scanners don't know what to do with them. You almost invariably will end up with a uh, an open margin there. It'll either break or it won't scan properly. And we'll check ourselves on axis. It looks good from this angle. So now I'm going to have the patient turn to the left a little bit so that I can get a direct view of this. As with all typodont preparations, we want to kind of aim for 0.5 millimeter super gingival margins. Has no clinical relevance whatsoever. This is still good. It looks like it is. Okay, we're a little bit shallow toward the uh, line angles, the mesial and the distal line angles. The straight buckle depth is about right. And uh, the way 
We can measure that as just the tip of this diamond. You want this diamond to sit fully on the table of the margin or on that, that basically that shoulder. Okay. Let's clean that off a little bit. There's a little bit of a lip starting right there. That little ski jump that we talked about. So we'll make sure to take that off. And now we'll move in approximately. So again, we want to get direct vision on this. We'll go to the distal. Always keep an eye on that adjacent tooth if you see a little Tooth dust build up, you better go in there frequently and clean it off so you can see it. that uh, tooth that you're preparing push you into basically the, the adjacent tooth if you're not careful. So make sure you hold it very steady. Looks like that shoulder's starting to form nicely. to be just a little deeper axially. And we'll deepen it at the line angle now. Pick out a spot that's shallow, just go back in and take it down a little bit more. And that looks pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and uh, clean it off a little. And it looks like we have the buckle and the interproximal, although I'm starting to form a little. J-lip here, so I'm going to take that off. Okay, now we'll move to the lingual. So one of the things that you'll find with uh, upper posterior, upper anterior teeth, really anything that isn't an upper second molar, and sometimes we do it on second molars also, is uh, you'll need to do two plane facial reduction where you take the facial surface uh, axially down in two planes uh, to help line things up. And if your axis is quite a quite a bit to the buckle, which this one is, you invariably have to take some off of the 
uh, the occlusal two-thirds on the buckle aspect. So we'll come back to that later after we've lined all of our axial walls up and uh, do a second facial plane of reduction. So let's key off of our axial wall out here that we've already reduced, line up our handpiece, and we'll start on the lingual now. Check ourselves. So we'll uh, resume our uh, lingual axial wall or palatal axial wall reduction with some direct vision. An upper second molar, and sometimes we do it on second molars also is uh, you'll need to do two-plane facial reduction where you take the facial surface uh, axially down in two planes uh, to help line things up. And if your axis is quite a, quite a bit to the buckle, which this one is, you invariably have to take some off of the, uh, the occlusal two-thirds on the buckle aspect. So we'll come back to that later after we've lined all of our axial walls up and uh, do a second facial plane of reduction. So let's key off of our axial wall out here that we've already reduced, line up our handpiece, and we'll start on the lingual now. Let's check ourselves. Make sure we're lining up nicely. We could be a little bit more to the buckle, so we will. We're going to have our patient maybe turn away from us, use some direct vision for a little bit. Off a little bit. Okay, we're going to still need to tip that wall a little bit to the buckle. Sure we don't have an undercut and now let's uh, connect at the line angles Now the hardest one, the distal lingual, but it's easier up here than it is uh, on a mandibular molar. I'm gonna have to lengthen that burr a little bit.
Okay. Let's Okay, we're getting very close. A little refinement on our distal axial wall. That lingual looks good. And put our burr back in. We're going to come over this way a little bit. And it was on the distal that I needed to refine that a little bit. Hold on a second. Find our uh, functional cusp bevel now a little bit. Now we'll add our second facial plane in out here. Typically, the facial plane is divided into a gingival third and an incisal or occlusal two-thirds. So we'll want the change of direction to occur at the junction of the gingival and the middle third. So we'll come back in with this. On some teeth it's a very subtle change. We're keying off that second molar really a lot of what we're doing is lining this burr up back there. When that's done, we do have to finish it off with a slight bevel, and we'll do that now. Basically, uh, we'll round all of the sharp line and point angles. And so, just a very slight rounding. We'll do the same with the margin ridge areas. down a little bit, look at it from multiple directions, still a little sharp right back here. sharp right here. Okay, we'll check our occlusion. Looks like we've got clearance there. And I think we're done. So let's go ahead and uh, Bring that down a little bit. <laughs> 